Let me start by giving you some background on my life before I dive into the issue at hand. I'm 34 years old and my wife is 31. We've been happily married for over eight years and together for a decade. Our marriage has always been incredibly fulfilling. We loved spending time together, shared strong physical chemistry, and truly considered each other best friends. Trust was the foundation of our relationship, with each of us fully confident in the other's fidelity. Notice the past tense I'm using? That's intentional, and you'll soon see why. We decided to delay starting a family in favor of enjoying our couple time and saving up for our first home, which we finally bought last year. We had big plans for the future, including starting a family this year. But all those plans are now off the table. I have a stable job with a good income. While my wife has been thriving as an elementary school teacher, loved by her students and their parents alike. Keep this in mind as I explain what happened next. Last Tuesday, my day took an unexpected turn when I received a voicemail from a woman urgently asking me to return her call as she had important information to share. Not recognizing her name, I suspected a scam and initially deleted the message. Typically, I'd block such numbers. But this time, I forgot. Later that day, the same number called again, and I let it go to voicemail. This time, the woman introduced herself as the wife of one of my wife's former colleagues, who had recently died. She stressed that she had crucial information for me, which made me curious enough to call her back from my personal cell phone. She picked up immediately and got straight to the point. After a brief introduction, she shared that her husband had passed away after a year-long battle with cancer. I expressed my condolences and noted down his name, thinking she wanted my wife to know about his passing. However, she corrected me, saying there was more to her call. She then dropped a bombshell her husband had confessed during his final days to having had a three-year affair with my wife from mid-2015 to the summer of 2018. The shock of this revelation sent a rush of adrenaline through me, and for a moment, I was speechless. After I regained my composure, I asked if his confession could have been influenced by his medication. She was certain it wasn't, explaining that she had found hundreds of messages between him and my wife on his laptop, along with a video from their last encounter, which was dated August 17, 2018. Struggling with disbelief, I asked her to send me the evidence. She agreed and forwarded the messages to my email. The video file was too large for email, so she decided to buy a USB drive copy the video onto it, and send it to my office via overnight mail. I received the drive the next morning. That day, I purposely brought my personal laptop to work just to watch the video on the USB drive. The moment I pressed play, I was met with a sight that utterly shattered me. There on the screen was my wife, alongside a man I didn't recognize. Involved in activities, I'd rather not detail here. Suffice it to say, what I saw was not only repulsive, but also shockingly unhygienic. Throughout the 29-minute video, both of them were disturbingly vocal, laughing and seemingly taking joy in their actions. It was absolutely sickening. When I first started watching, tears immediately came to my eyes and I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. But as the video continued, my initial grief turned into fiery anger and raw fury. Thankfully, my wife was not there to witness my reaction. I'm not sure what I would have done in her presence. It's now 7.09 p.m. on a Thursday evening, and I've been drafting this message for the past hour and a half. Earlier today, I told my wife I had to go out for a business dinner with some clients, a usual enough occurrence that she suspected nothing. As for what I'm contemplating next, I'm leaning heavily toward a divorce. The idea of staying with her has become unthinkable, and forgiveness is out of the question. In fact, after seeing what I did, the thought of being anywhere near her without protective gear seems impossible. And I'm not even joking. Moreover, moreover, the fact that this video is four years old changes nothing for me. Her betrayal cuts too deep, and it's something I cannot simply look past. Now, here's where I need some advice. Should I confront her? with the evidence and allow her a chance to explain? Or should I go straight to hiring a lawyer and serving her divorce papers? 
I've kept this to myself up to now. Mostly out of sheer embarrassment, which is why I'm seeking guidance here anonymously. I promise to read all your responses. Here's a quick update on my situation. After my supposed dinner on Thursday, I returned home and acted as if everything was normal. Thankfully, I managed to maintain some distance and she didn't try to get physically close. On Friday, I took the day off and consulted a divorce attorney after doing some thorough research online. I presented all the evidence, including the video, to the attorney. She informed me that although my wife's actions were a clear violation of our marriage vows, it wouldn't really affect the outcome of our divorce. She explained that our state adheres to a no-fault divorce system, a concept initiated by Ronald Reagan back in the late 60s when he was governor of California. This law has been adopted by several other states since. Although I've always respected Reagan as one of our finest presidents, this revelation left me with mixed feelings. Despite everything, my decision to divorce remains firm, although I realize it may put me in a worse financial situation. What I'm wrestling with now is whether to confront her or just wait and serve the divorce papers. I'm inclined to wait, but I'm not sure how much longer I can manage that. The past two evenings have been exceedingly difficult, and the thought of facing her again tonight is daunting. As I pen this on a brisk Saturday morning, I find myself seated outside a quaint coffee shop, a short stroll from our home. I told my wife I needed some peace to catch up on work emails, which is something I occasionally do. So thankfully, she didn't press to join me. However, she's texted me a couple of times already, wondering when I'll be back. I get the sense she might be feeling that something's off with me. That's all for my update at the moment. It's now Sunday morning, and once again, I'm outside a coffee shop, but this time it's 120 minutes from our house. About a week ago, I hit a breaking point and finally confronted my wife about her affair. I couldn't hold it in any longer, so I chose last Sunday morning to do it. We managed to get through Saturday because we spent it visiting a museum and dining out with another couple, which thankfully meant I didn't have to spend too much one-on-one -on -one time with her. By the end of the day, we were both too drained to even think about intimacy. The next morning, in our kitchen while she was making coffee, I decided it was time to bring it up, even though I was already feeling irritable and filled with anger. I started by casually asking if she knew a particular individual, her affair partner. When I mentioned his name, she turned to look at me with a look of surprise. Initially, she denied knowing him. But then she admitted that he was a science teacher at the junior high. I proceeded by mentioning that I had read about his passing from a serious illness. She responded, saying it was tragic and that he was so young. She added that she didn't know him well, but was aware he had a wife and a son. I let a few moments pass, watching her as she sat down and served me coffee. She seemed anxious and kept glancing at her smartphone. After a while, I questioned if she had ever worked with this man in any capacity. Frustrated, she firmly said no then asked why I was bringing him up. I pushed further, asking if she was absolutely sure, to which she confidently said yes, and seemed to find my questions unreasonable. At that point, my patience was wearing thin, so I decided to be direct. I told her I knew about her three-year affair with this man and demanded that she be honest about it. She asked what I was talking about, and I insisted that she knew exactly what I meant and should stop pretending otherwise. Her initial response was to burst into tears and ask how I had found out. I informed her that the method of discovery was irrelevant, but that I had all their love messages as proof. She tried to deflect by claiming those messages were part of a fantasy roleplay and nothing physical had happened. I cut her off and asked her to repeat her claim, which she did, still denying any physical contact. That's when I showed her the video of them together and hit play which completely broke her composure. She quickly shifted from denying any wrongdoing to apologizing, claiming it all happened four years ago, and that she had changed as a person since then. I couldn't listen to it anymore. I stood up, left my coffee untouched, and walked out to the patio, her following behind, crying and pleading for me to talk. She continued to sob loudly and repeated pleas over and over. To avoid causing a scene in our quiet neighborhood, I went back inside. However, my anger was escalating, and I went into our bedroom to start packing. 
She tried to physically stop me, hugging me, and trying to pull me away from my suitcase. I warned her that if she didn't let go, I would send the video to her parents. Upon hearing my ultimatum, she abruptly released me and collapsed onto the bed, crying and continuously apologizing. I finished my packing decisively and left the house. When she tearfully inquired where I was headed, I informed her I would be staying at a hotel for some time. I left her there, still in tears, and drove away. I headed straight to the same coffee shop I'm at now, located just down the road from my office. From this spot, I made a reservation at the hotel across the street and spent the morning contemplating my next steps. Throughout this time, my wife tried to reach me by persistently calling and texting, but I remained unresponsive until I checked into the hotel at around 3 o'clock p.m. During our call, which stretched nearly two hours, I told her unequivocally that I intended to divorce her and that she should prepare herself for what was coming. The conversation was dominated by her pleas and attempts to persuade me to reconsider. At one point, I asked her to explain her relationship with her affair partner. She disclosed that they shared a specific, disturbing fetish, which was the entirety of their connection. She attempted to justify their physical actions by asserting they held no emotional significance, even going so far as to criticize the man's appearance, claiming that from the video, it was clear how unattractive and emaciated he was. She argued that it was evident she would never leave me for him, and that their meetings were purely to satisfy the said fetish, which she insisted she no longer harbored. In response, I suggested that she might have serious mental issues and advised her to seek professional help. Perhaps unwisely, she clung to the suggestion and admitted that she might indeed be insane for her actions. She reiterated that everything had occurred over four years ago, and she hadn't considered being with anyone else since then. I countered by stating that the only reason the affair had ended was that her affair partner moved five hours away to take a position in another school district. She tried to convince me that she had ended it much earlier, but I pointed out that the video was recorded just the day before he and his family left town. She had no rebuttal, and it became painfully clear to me that my wife was not only a cheater, but a habitual liar as well. On Monday of the past week, I met with my attorney to inform her of the weekend's events and express my desire to expedite the divorce process. She agreed to move forward and recommended that I cease all direct contact with my wife, directing any necessary future communications through her. She also advised against confronting my wife without witnesses, highlighting the potential risks involved. She shared that she has handled numerous instances where husbands were wrongly accused in similar situations. I took her advice to heart and confirmed that I would adhere to this approach moving forward. So that's where things stand now. Everything has unfolded so rapidly, and I haven't had a moment to truly grieve the end of my marriage. At this moment, I don't feel too terrible. But I am aware that the full emotional impact will likely catch up with me eventually. After granting my attorney permission to fast-track the divorce, I shared the news with my family. They expressed both shock and deep disappointment at my wife's actions, aligning with my decision to end the marriage. Sitting at a coffee shop down the street from my house on a serene Saturday morning, I told my wife I needed some space to catch up on work emails. A typical excuse for some alone time, which she accepted without question. Even so, she sent a few texts asking when I'd be coming home perhaps sensing something was amiss. That's all for this part of the update. Second update, second update. By Sunday morning, I found myself back at a coffee shop, but this time, it was 20 minutes from our home. The previous week, I reached my breaking point and confronted my wife about her affair. Unable to hold back any longer, I chose last Sunday morning for the confrontation. We managed to get through Saturday because we spent it visiting a museum and dining with friends which thankfully meant minimal alone time with her. We were both too tired for intimacy that night. The following morning, while she was making coffee in our kitchen, I decided to confront her, despite feeling irritable and angry. I began by asking if she knew a particular person, her fair partner. Initially, she feigned ignorance, but then acknowledged he was a science teacher at the local junior high. I mentioned his recent passing from an illness, to which she expressed how tragic it was and noted that he was young, with a family. 
After letting some moments pass and observing her nervous demeanor, I asked if she had ever collaborated with him in any way. She quickly denied it and seemed frustrated by my questioning. I pushed further, asking for confirmation, and she confidently denied any involvement, dismissing my concerns as unreasonable. Frustrated with the evasiveness, I directly confronted her about their three-year affair, demanding honesty. She broke down. Asking how I found out, I informed her that the source didn't matter, but that I had their messages as evidence. She tried to claim they were part of a fantasy roleplay and that nothing physical had happened. I interrupted her, asking her to repeat her claim, which she did, still denying any physical contact. That's when I showed her the video, playing it in front of her, which left her unable to continue her denials. She transitioned from denial to apologies, claiming the affair was years ago and that she had changed. I countered by pointing out that it only ended because her partner moved away. She tried to argue it had ended earlier, but I reminded her the video was from the day before he moved. She had no comeback. Confirming my worst suspicions about her deceit, the next Monday, I met with my lawyer to discuss these events and push for an expedited divorce process. She advised cutting all direct contact with my wife and only communicating through legal channels, cautioning me about potential false accusations based on her experiences. I agreed to follow her advice strictly. Final update. After granting permission to fast-track the divorce, I shared the developments with my family, who were shocked and disappointed. A year later, the divorce process wasn't as swift as expected due to our state's no-fault laws, which I mistakenly thought would mean a simple split. Despite covering most bills and contributing the majority of our assets, I still ended up paying alimony and an additional lump sum after selling our house. Recently, my ex-wife has continued to reach out, even suggesting bizarre ideas like having a child together post-divorce or using me as a sperm donor if I refused. These interactions left me deeply concerned and I plan to cease communication the next time she contacts. Meanwhile, I intend to inform her parents about her recent actions, hoping they can discreetly intervene. This ordeal has cost me financially, but I have regained my freedom and am moving forward, focused on rebuilding my life with the past firmly behind me. Second, it all started when my mother came to visit me at school. As was her tradition, she stayed at a nearby hotel during her visits. One evening, while we were having dinner, I noticed her phone was buzzing constantly with messages. At one point, thinking I was distracted, she discreetly sent someone her hotel location and room number. This caught me off guard and my heart started to race with unease. After dinner, I pretended to head back to my apartment while she returned to her hotel. Instead, I drove to a secluded spot and broke down in tears. That night marked the beginning of a deep rift in my family, particularly between my mother and me. It's been over a year since that defining night and I am now in my third year of college. Currently, I face a challenging decision whether to enter the NFL draft or complete my fourth year of college. My coach is pushing for me to finish my degree, but I can't shake the feeling that his advice is more for his benefit than mine. Deep down, I know that pursuing an NFL career and starting to earn a living is the right choice for me. During these trying times, I find myself missing my mother's presence, especially during my football games. She used to be my most ardent supporter, never missing a game or even a practice, whether it was freezing cold or blisteringly hot. However, our relationship took a hard hit when I discovered she had started a relationship with two of my teammates during an away game. The embarrassment was profound, and it nearly drove me to leave the program. Although our relationship soured, my father, who had always been more of a background figure in my life, encouraged me to stay focused and not let the conflict derail my goals. Subsequently, I made the tough decision to bar my mom from attending my games, which was a painful adjustment given her previous constant presence. To give you more insight into my background, I grew up with two older sisters in a family where my dad was a workaholic and my mom worked part-time as an accountant and was also a stay-at-home mom. Around the age of 14, I began noticing my parents drifting apart. 
They started sleeping in separate bedrooms and often argued, though my dad usually walked away from the confrontations to shield us from witnessing any discord. Despite being very close to my mom, to the point of being labeled a mama's boy, my respect for my dad never wavered. He was the silent type who, when not working, took pleasure in taking me into the woods. He provided consistent guidance and support, allowing my mom to take the lead at home primarily to avoid conflicts with her. My mom played a crucial role in developing my athletic skills and was always overly enthusiastic about motivating me, which I credit for much of my success. She was always there, cheering me on at every game and practice, a constant figure of support. Though my dad's presence might have seemed less pronounced, he was always there, too just in a quieter, more reserved way. He chose this approach largely to maintain peace at home, stepping back to let my mom lead in raising me and managing our household. Choosing the right college for football was a huge decision in my life, and my mom played a crucial role in helping me select the perfect school. As a highly sought-after recruit, I had multiple scholarship offers to consider. My mom's keen insight and guidance were invaluable, leading me to a program that fits me like a glove. The college I chose was several hours away from home, which meant my mom often made the trip to visit me, staying in a hotel at least once every two weeks. Initially, I thought her frequent visits were just to catch my games or to support me at away matches, but it soon became clear there was more to her visits. Looking back, I realized that my parents' relationship was on rocky ground. My mom had become increasingly controlling, and this seemed to drive my dad into throwing himself more into his work. Their relationship strained under her influence, and I used to think they were holding off on divorce just until I moved out. Yet, they remained together, even after I left for college. My mom is undeniably attractive, and she's always been aware of it, often reminding my dad of the cat she was. From high school onwards, I noticed how my friends reacted to her. Initially, it was embarrassing. I didn't appreciate the attention she attracted. However, over time, I grew accustomed to the stares and the respectful inquiries from coaches and players alike, who seemed keen to strike up conversations with her. Despite this attention, I never imagined my mom would be unfaithful to my dad. She was someone I looked up to enormously. However, everything changed during my second year of college. Our team was part of the Southeastern Conference, and it was around this time that things took an unexpected turn. As a top player, I was looking forward to a potential NFL career, and my reputation among my peers was high. We typically invited family members to our games, and for a particular away game, both my mom and sister were supposed to come. Unfortunately, my sister couldn't make it due to an exam, and my dad who rarely attended my games due to his hectic work schedule and ongoing arguments with my mom, stayed home. It was odd that I saw so little of my mom during that week, given she had made the trip supposedly to support me. I assumed she was caught up with work and I appreciated her making an effort, something I felt my dad often failed to match. But about a week later, whispers started circulating. A teammate mentioned that someone on the team had gotten involved with my mom. At first, I brushed it off as locker room banter, assuming they were just messing with me, knowing I had a promising future in the program. It's a common scene in college sports. Family members journeying great distances to watch their sons play. My team was no exception. Almost all my teammates had relatives in the stands, cheering us on from afar. For me... This supportive backdrop changed dramatically one day after a game as I approached my mom. I caught her texting with a smile that vanished as soon as she saw me. She tried to hide her phone quickly, but her body language screamed secrecy. That evening at dinner in a local restaurant, her phone was a constant distraction, buzzing relentlessly. She barely looked up from her screen, and in a brief moment when she thought I wasn't watching, I saw her message someone her hotel location and room number. The pretext of needing an early night suddenly seemed hollow. This wasn't like the previous times we'd cut dinners short because I had other plans with friends or girlfriends. This time, as we left the restaurant and she hurried off with barely a goodbye, a sense of betrayal started to sink in. Reflecting back, I realized this wasn't the first time her actions had seemed off. It felt like deja vu. As if she had been visiting not so much to see me, 
but to meet someone else. Discovering her infidelity hit me like a storm. This belief initially overwhelmed me. How could my mom, the woman I had looked up to my entire life, betray our family like this? The shock gradually turned to anger. Fury at her for risking our family's harmony, for deceiving my dad, and for dragging me into this messy situation. I was equally furious with the teammates involved for violating a trust I hadn't even realized was at stake. Then came the sadness and pain, a profound sense of loss washing over me. The stable family life I had always taken for granted was now fractured, as if a piece of my heart had been torn away, leaving a gaping wound. Confusion and questions swirled in my mind. Why did she do it? How long had it been going on? Had I been completely oblivious all this time? Guilt crept in too, tormenting me with thoughts of whether I could have changed something or missed some crucial signs. These emotions twisted together, creating a whirlwind of turmoil within me. As I pretended to drive away, I actually pulled over in a secluded spot to gather my thoughts. The more I pondered, the angrier I became. All this time, I had believed my mom's visits were for me. But now, doubt cast a long shadow over those memories. Was she really there for me? Or was it always about someone else? As the moments passed, a wave of anger grew inside me. This anger wasn't just aimed at my mom, but also at someone else who I suspected was a teammate. For months, I had heard rumors. And now, it seemed like those whispers might actually be true. It felt as though everyone was in on some cruel joke, and the idea that my mom might have been involved with students or staff members haunted me. Usually during games, my attention was solely on the sport, on the ball. After all, she's an adult, my mother, and she's married. Honestly, if she had decided to divorce my dad and move on with someone else, that wouldn't have bothered me much. What really got under my skin was that she chose to do this right here, in a place where I was well known and where I needed to keep my focus sharp on my game. She was supposed to be my support, but now it seemed she was turning into a major distraction. Hours later, I made up my mind to confront her. I headed to her hotel, my mind racing as I pulled into the packed parking lot. I tried to spot a familiar car among the sea of vehicles, many of which belonged to people I knew. Frustrated and full of pent-up energy, I barged into the hotel, oblivious to the stares of bystanders. I knew her room number by heart so I marched straight to her door and pounded on it, not caring about the noise I was causing. It took a moment, but eventually, the door swung open. There she was, looking disheveled, her expression one of complete surprise. As if I were the one acting irrationally, I brushed past her into the room, searching for the person she was with. She tried to stop me, but I pushed past her and found the bathroom door shut and locked. Without hesitating, I rammed into the bathroom door repeatedly until it buckled under the force. At this point, my mom was shrieking, trying to get my attention. But when the door flew open, I was stunned. Not just one, but two of my teammates emerged. One was the guy rumored to be involved with her, and the other was his close buddy, known around campus for his flings rather than his future in football. This revelation ignited something fierce in me. This wasn't about love. It felt like a direct attack on my reputation and future. I lost all control and lunged at them in a fury. They weren't prepared for my anger, and while one managed to escape, I caught the other. We scuffled, driven by my overwhelming rage, until another person, possibly attracted by the noise, intervened. He seemed to know who I was, urgently advising me to leave before the police arrived. By now, Tears were streaming down my mom's face as she pleaded with me to go. I left the hotel room in a storm of emotion, deeply wounded and betrayed. And as I drove away, I made it clear to my mom that our relationship was severed. My anger toward her matched my feelings of betrayal by him. I took everything personally, convinced that their actions were intended to humiliate me. On my drive back to my apartment, I phoned my dad and poured out the entire story to him. To my surprise, he was incredibly calming, 
almost nonchalant about the whole thing. He reassured me, emphasizing that this situation wasn't really about them. It was about me. He reminded me that as the star, the future of our family, I would inevitably face hurdles and obstacles meant to knock me down. He stressed that what mattered most was how I managed these challenges. The fallout from the incident was intense. I learned that the police were looking for me, and the teammate I had clashed with was contemplating pressing charges. Luckily, he used his influence to defuse the legal tension, which saved me a trip to the police station. Later, my coach pulled me aside for a heart-to-heart. -heart. He admitted that if he were in my shoes, he probably would have reacted similarly. He reinforced what my dad had said about me being the star player, hinting that those who didn't have a promising future might try to bring me down. He even shared a personal story about his first wife's infidelity, which explained his own trust issues with women. Our talk made me reflect on my initial reaction to the ordeal. Although the coach acknowledged the humiliation I felt, he suggested that my reaction might have been a bit over the top. Nevertheless, he promised to do everything within his power to remove those problematic teammates from our program. And he kept that promise a few months later. With this newfound stability, I decided to stay in college for another year instead of jumping straight into the NFL draft. As the news spread, my siblings began to distance themselves from her mother and my dad initiated divorce proceedings. Despite her attempts to reconcile, I haven't spoken to her since. If her affair had been her own business, on her own time, and not with my teammates, maybe I could have processed it differently. But her actions almost cost me my spot in the program and jeopardized my future. While I miss her presence at my games and the support she used to provide, it's going to take some time for me to heal and possibly rebuild our relationship. I'm not one to hold grudges, and surprisingly, this one has lasted nearly a year. I've forgiven her, but mending our bond is tough, especially being in the same program with people who are all too aware of the drama. I refuse to let this incident alter my career path. I'm stronger than that. Despite the ongoing ridicule and gossip, my resilience is unwavering. My focus now is on entering the NFL draft this year and putting all of this behind me. I'm grateful for my coach's unwavering support and guidance during this time. There's still more for me to learn and achieve before I move on. And I'm eager to take those next steps. Just over a week ago, I, a 36-year-old woman, made the excruciating decision to cheat on my 39-year-old husband with my floor supervisor, a man in his 50s. Owning up to my actions is difficult, but I believe in accountability. Here's some context. My husband and I had planned to attend a work party together, but a last-minute cancellation by our babysitter meant he stayed home with our child while I attended alone. That night, after some unexpected and flattering attention from my supervisor, I ended up spending the night with him at a nearby hotel. Since he transferred to my floor a few months back, there had been an unsettling tension between us, which my husband noticed. Despite reassuring him, I was also lying to myself ignoring the unease that built up inside me. That night, swept away by the moment and the compliments, I crossed a line I can't erase. The next morning, confronted by my husband, who had seen my location on a shared app, I couldn't hide the truth any longer. I had premeditated the affair, knowing full well the potential fallout for our family. It was not a spontaneous mistake. It was a deliberate decision, and now I'm grappling with the consequences. Our marriage was not perfect. Since giving birth last year, I've struggled with low self-esteem and body image issues. My husband, embodying the typical male stereotype, hasn't been very supportive. Despite my efforts at the gym, his lack of acknowledgement added to my feelings of invisibility. Our intimate life suffered, compounded by the fatigue of parenting a toddler. While these issues provide context, they do not excuse my actions. On that fateful night, craving to feel desired and attractive, I let my guard down. The guilt of knowing how deeply I've hurt my husband and our family is overwhelming. We've had UPS and downs, but I genuinely love him and am committed to making amends. He's offered a second chance through counseling motivated by his experiences with his parents' divorce. Determined not to let our child suffer similarly, he's asked me to cut all ties with my supervisor 
a tough request as it could impact my career. But ultimately, I knew what was more important. Choosing my family over potential job advancement was the right decision. As much as I wished to mend our relationship, I realized the depth of the pain I've caused. Healing will take time and effort, and while I'm dedicated to being the wife he deserves, I know the road to redemption is long and fraught with no guarantees of restoring what was once there. Getting through the fallout caused by my actions has been incredibly challenging. I am continually learning and reflecting on my behavior and the impact it has had. I can feel his anguish, and it's truly heart-wrenching to grasp the full extent of the damage to our relationship. I am grateful he's open to giving us a chance through counseling. I'm committed to becoming the wife he truly deserves, but I am acutely aware that healing will require time and persistent effort. I fully recognize the feelings of inadequacy he's grappling with and acknowledge his right to feel this way. It's an immensely difficult situation for him and I deeply regret putting him in such a painful position. I am here to make amends, yet I'm also being realistic. The path to redemption is long and fraught with uncertainty. There's no guarantee that things will ever return to how they once were. Ultimately, it's about what's best for our family. And I am prepared to do whatever it takes to rebuild the trust and respect we once shared. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I am not seeking sympathy, but rather acknowledging my mistakes and the journey I am on to make things right. It's a challenging process. But I am committed to learning and improving every single day. A lot has happened, and I felt it necessary to update everyone on how things have been unfolding. Honestly, the situation took an unexpected turn. After that heart-wrenching conversation about my infidelity, I thought we were making progress. We were communicating, attending counseling, and I was genuinely striving to show my remorse. However, things became even more complex. My husband discovered through my call records that I had been speaking with my supervisor for over an hour when I claimed to be at my mother's place. In truth, I was at a mall because I needed privacy for that call. I realize how this might sound, but my supervisor was discussing concerns about my professional move to a different floor, and I didn't want my husband to know about these discussions after he explicitly asked me not to communicate with my supervisor. This discovery led to me being caught in another lie. I'm still in disbelief that he went through my phone like that. It feels like a violation of trust. When he confronted me, I was taken aback and could only muster weak excuses. Unfortunately, he wasn't willing to accept them. He packed up our child and left. And he's currently staying elsewhere. I'm left alone, dealing with the mess I've created. Since then, I've been feeling unheard and neglected. Despite giving him space and attending to his every need, he often remains distant and emotionally cold. I understand what he's going through, but sometimes I also need someone to talk to, and my supervisor was there. It's frustrating because it feels like my husband hasn't given me a chance to truly make amends. I've been reflecting on my low self-esteem and the issues I've been facing. Doesn't that count for something? I've learned that my husband is staying with his parents, and honestly, I believe he should handle this situation more maturely, without resorting to his parents' support as if he were a child. Taking our child with him feels unjustifiable. It's as if he's using them against me. I've tried reaching out to him to initiate a conversation, but he's not responding. It's as if he's completely shut me out. I understand that I deserve this treatment, but it still hurts. I acknowledge my mistakes but I just wish we could go back to resolving our problems through communication instead of being in this state of limbo. I feel awful about the entire situation, aware that I've deeply hurt him and my continued dishonesty only adds to the pain. Seeing him so upset is challenging, and I wish I had been more transparent from the start. I understand why he's so hurt and angry. Trust is delicate, and I further eroded it. I can't help but ponder my actions and recognize that my attempts to rebuild trust were overshadowed by my lack of honesty. I acknowledge my mistakes, but I deeply wish we could return to resolving our issues through communication rather than enduring this current state of disconnect. The realization of how much I've hurt him, compounded by my continued dishonesty, weighs heavily on me. Seeing his distress is heart-wrenching, and I regret not being more transparent from the beginning. I understand his pain and anger, 
Trust is delicate, and my actions have only served to further erode it. I've come to realize that expressing regret isn't enough. It's about being genuinely honest about my actions. The situation I've created is chaotic, and I'm prepared to face the consequences. Currently, I am giving my husband the space he needs, recognizing that my actions have caused significant pain. I'm committed to respecting his emotions and boundaries, hoping that, over time, we might reach a mutual understanding and possibly find a way to reconcile. However, I also realize this might not be entirely within my control. I am grateful for the support and advice I've received. Hearing various perspectives has been enlightening, and I am dedicated to learning from my mistakes and growing as a person. I will continue to update you all on our progress. The past few weeks have been excruciatingly tough, and sharing my struggles online has been part of my coping mechanism. Recently, the situation escalated when my husband served me with divorce papers, signaling the likely end of our marriage. Accepting this reality has been incredibly difficult. During this period, I have not had the opportunity to see our child, which is one of the most painful aspects of this ordeal. I understand and respect my husband's decision to protect our child in this way. Furthermore, my family has disowned me, amplifying the isolation and loneliness I'm experiencing. This situation has starkly revealed the true colors of those closest to me. As for my supervisor, despite his continued advances, I am striving to maintain a professional distance. The potential for rumors and complications at work is high and I am keen to uphold my professionalism, despite sensing that the rumor mill is already active. This experience has shown me the tremendous harm my actions have caused not only to my own life, but also to my husband's and child's lives. At times, I feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of my mistakes and feel akin to a monster. The path ahead is fraught with uncertainty, but I am committed to learning from my past and striving towards a brighter future. I am thankful for those who have supported me through this journey and I hope to rebuild trust and prove myself as a dependable parent in the future. Second, my wife and I, both 38, have been married for 18 years, blessed with a 17-year-old son and a 16-year-old daughter. Our story began at 19, when we met through mutual friends. It was love at first sight. Despite our youth and modest means, our love for each other saw us through the early challenges of life. At that time, I was working in customer service for an ISP, and my wife was an assistant coordinator. We managed to secure a comfortable apartment and had two reliable cars. A few months into our marriage, we were thrilled to discover my wife was pregnant with our son. Coincidentally, I received a promotion which significantly boosted our finances allowing my wife to become a stay-at-home mom. A year after our son was born, we welcomed our daughter. Three years later, we bought a lovely four-bedroom home in a family-friendly neighborhood. Despite the demands of parenthood, we never let the romance fade, and I was incredibly proud of both my family and career achievements. It seemed we were living the American dream. However, my world was turned upside down when I received a voicemail at work from a woman I'll call Mrs. Jones. She identified herself as the wife of a former co-worker of my wife and hinted at having crucial information about their relationship. Since I wasn't familiar with the co-worker, I was completely unaware of what awaited me. After returning her call, Mrs. Jones revealed that my wife had been involved in an affair with her husband. She had discovered the affair just that week and her husband had confessed. They had been having inappropriate conversations and meetings for over a year, but things had only become physical recently. She had stumbled upon explicit emails planning rendezvous at their house while she was at work. Naturally, I was devastated by this revelation. When I returned home, I found my wife in tears. She had already been informed by her lover that their secret was out, and his wife had spoken to me. In a panic, she had taken our children to my parents' house, claiming she planned an impromptu date night to surprise me. The night that followed was filled with tears and heartache. We cried and shouted through the hours, struggling with the betrayal. My wife begged me not to leave her, 
Professing her love and regret, she confirmed the affair details, promising that if given another chance, she would prove herself the best wife in the world. Despite her pleas, I felt broken, unable to trust or be intimate with her again, and I expressed my desire for a divorce. Each time I mentioned divorce, my wife became inconsolable. Ultimately, I suggested that we could only continue in our marriage if she agreed to sign a post-nuptial agreement. This idea was inspired by a story I once read about a man who took a similar approach after his wife's infidelity. Now, finding myself in a similar predicament, I felt compelled to consider this option. The proposed agreement would clearly outline the affair and stipulate that in the event of any future divorce initiated by either of us, she would not receive alimony and would be entitled to only 25% of our jointly held assets, rather than the usual 50%. Furthermore, we would share custody of our children 50 50 with their primary residence being with me. I presented her with two choices, accept the post-nuptial agreement or face an immediate divorce where she might receive alimony, 50% of the assets and likely primary custody of our children. She agreed to proceed with the post-nuptial but initially requested to exclude any mention of the affair from the document out of shame. I refused insisting that acknowledging the affair was fundamental to the agreement's validity. We agreed to keep the details of the affair confidential between us, a decision that would later prove to be a grave error, and attempted to move forward. I expressed my doubts that we could ever be more than just roommates co-parenting our children. She tearfully agreed to keep our arrangement secret, vowing to do whatever it took to regain my trust and love, even if it took a lifetime. Within the next week, I consulted with a divorce attorney and shortly thereafter, we had a signed and filed post-nuptial agreement in place. As part of re-establishing trust, I insisted we both undergo STD, testing and arrange DNA tests for our children, given my shattered trust. Although the STD tests brought her additional embarrassment and my request for DNA, testing saddened her deeply. She consented, understanding the depth of my distrust. For the next two years, our existence together was strained and miserable. We lived a facade, maintaining appearances for our children, family, and friends. My wife kept all her belongings in our master bedroom, but each night, after maintaining the illusion of unity by retiring together, she would discreetly move to a spare bedroom. In public, we displayed affection, holding hands, sharing light kisses, to preserve normalcy for our children. Yet, when alone, I was cold and indifferent, my resentment growing deeper with each passing day. Despite her relentless efforts to restore our bond, I remained emotionally detached. I required her to find a part-time job that fit around our children's school schedules. Our routine was rigid. She would drop off the kids, go to work, then pick them up and prepare dinner. I would arrive home by 6 o'clock p.m., and we would dine as a family then clean up and spend the evening with our children, engaging in conversations, playing games, watching movies, and helping with homework. My wife and I, both 38, have been happily married for 18 years, blessed with a 17-year-old son and a 16-year-old daughter. Our love story began when we were just 19, meeting through mutual friends. It was love at first sight, and despite our modest beginnings, our deep affection for each other helped us navigate the early challenges of our marriage. I was working in customer service for an ISP, and my wife was an assistant coordinator when we first started out. We managed to secure a comfortable apartment and even own two reliable cars. Just a few months after our wedding, we were thrilled to learn of my wife's pregnancy with our son. Around the same time, I received a promotion that significantly improved our financial situation, allowing my wife the opportunity to become a stay-at-home mom. A year later, our daughter was born. And three years after that, we moved into a charming four-bedroom house in a family-friendly neighborhood. Despite the challenges of parenthood, we always made sure to keep our romantic life vibrant. Life seemed perfect, a true embodiment of the American dream, until one day, when I received a voicemail at work from a Mrs. Jones, claiming to be the wife of a former co-worker of my wife, she said she had something important to discuss concerning our spouses. Not knowing this co-worker, I was blindsided by her subsequent revelation. My wife was having an affair with her husband. According to Mrs. 
Jones, what had started as inappropriate conversations over a year ago, had turned physical just the week before. Devastated, I confronted my wife when I got home. She was already in tears, having been alerted by her lover that their secret was out. In her panic, she had sent our kids to my parents. Pretending to set up a surprise date night for us, we spent that entire night discussing and arguing, our home filled with tears and recriminations, Despite her pleas for forgiveness and promises of change, I was adamant about wanting a divorce. However, each time I mentioned divorce, my wife became distraught. Finally, I offered a possibility of reconciliation, but only under the condition that she sign a postnuptial agreement. This agreement would detail the affair and ensure that, in the event of a divorce following the affair, she would forfeit claims to alimony and would only be entitled to 25% of our jointly held assets. It also stipulated that custody of our children would be split 50 50ths, with their primary residence being with me. Reluctantly, she agreed to the postnuptial agreement, although she requested to omit the affair from the document out of shame. I insisted that the affair be included to validate the agreement, though we agreed to keep the details confidential between us. This attempt to move forward was marked by my insistence on both of us undergoing STD testing and DNA tests for our children reflecting my shattered trust. For the next two years, our life together was nothing short of a facade, straining both our emotional and mental health. While we maintained appearances in front of our children and friends, behind closed doors, our relationship was cold and distant. My wife moved her belongings out of our bedroom, and although we would go to bed together for appearances' sake, she would move to the spare room once the children were asleep. Despite the awkwardness, on a pivotal Saturday when the children were at their grandparents, a moment of unexpected teamwork in the garage led to a thaw in our icy relations. My wife, dressed provocatively, helped me install a shelving unit. The physical proximity and shared task led to laughter and eventually to an unexpected reconciliation in our bedroom. That afternoon marked a turning point in our relationship, and since then, we have been rebuilding our love and trust. Eleven years have passed filled with love, happiness, and a stronger bond than ever. The affair rarely crosses my mind now, and we haven't discussed it in years. Our life had returned to normal until today. When Mrs. Jones reappeared, bringing back memories of a time I thought we had left behind, feeling overwhelmed, all I could manage was an apology for my wife's actions. Mrs. Jones quickly said, don't apologize. We were both deceived by the people we trusted. She then shared insights that shifted my entire perspective. She expressed her admiration for my forgiving nature, contrasting it with her own response to her husband's betrayal. He had spent every Wednesday morning for 16 months with my wife, deceiving her on special days like Valentine's Day, her birthday, Christmas Eve, and their anniversary, only to return to her as if nothing had happened. She went on to describe how karma had not been kind to him since their divorce. Mrs. Jones had reported his workplace affairs, leading to his firing after it was discovered he was also involved in commission fraud for over five years. Although criminal charges were dropped once he paid the restitution, the legal battles and settlements had drained his finances, forcing him into bankruptcy. He had moved to Orlando to start anew, but suffered a major heart attack the previous year which severely limited his mobility and forced him into early retirement at 66. She shared that despite everything, she had never wished ill on him and had always encouraged their children to maintain a relationship with their father, though they held resentment and kept their distance. She concluded by revealing she had remarried eight years ago and was now happier than she had ever been. We exchanged numbers, and she offered to provide more details about the affair or copies of the emails if I ever needed them. I thanked her, wished her well, and we parted ways. As I walked away, I felt a mix of numbness and intense clarity. It became evident that my second marriage was built on deceit. My wife hadn't just slipped up briefly, she had led a dual life, exploiting our family's trust to cover her tracks. Filled with a mix of disgust, rage, and an intensity of emotions I hadn't known before. I knew I couldn't face her immediately. Instead, I texted my wife, saying I'd be late because I was doing some shopping and grabbing lunch. Over the next four hours, 
I plan my next steps meticulously. First is to confront my wife this evening. I resolve to confront her about everything Mrs. Jones had shared. Secondly, move her belongings into the spare bedroom tonight to signify the immediate change in our relationship dynamics. Next step is to inform our children tomorrow. They need to understand the situation in a controlled and thoughtful manner. I have to share the news with our parents on Labor Day since it was important that our extended family understood the situation from our perspective to prevent misunderstandings. And finally, to meet with an attorney on Tuesday to draft an in-house separation agreement since legal advice was necessary to navigate the forthcoming challenges responsibly. During this time, my wife reached out via calls and texts, likely sensing something was amiss. I kept my responses vague, indicating that I'd surprise her when I got home. Her concern was palpable, likely intensified by my uncharacteristic behavior. This planned approach was essential not just for confronting the immediate issues, but for beginning the process of healing and moving forward, whether together or apart. At the conclusion of the 90-day period, I was poised to decide among three options, reconciliation, divorce, or extending the evaluation period by another 90 days. An update was due last month, but a flurry of events in both my personal and professional life has kept me occupied. On the professional front, I was promoted to vice president of customer service after five years at the internet service provider. Following this, I transitioned to a customer care manager at a large privately held industrial company. Over 13 years, I've climbed the corporate ladder to the top position in my department. Both my family and my colleagues are thrilled about my promotion, which reflects years of dedicated hard work and is particularly rewarding. This new role entails both in-state and out-of-state travel, offering a much-needed distraction as I deal with personal challenges in the coming year. On the personal side, I confronted my wife about her past actions. She confessed to the full extent of her affair, revealing details she had previously withheld for fear of divorce. The affair lasted 16 months, starting innocuously at a national coffee chain and quickly escalated to regular meetings at his house. She admitted to their first encounter on a sofa in his basement and subsequent liaisons in his marital bed, always without protection, a detail that devastated me further. My wife insisted that throughout the affair, she made sure to satisfy my needs, initiating encounters that fulfilled my desires. However, hearing this only deepened my disgust and distress. I suggested she might be suffering from an underlying mental health issue considering the extent of cruelty involved in her actions. Tearfully, she agreed, expressing a desperate desire to have ended the affair sooner. She claimed that the affair's discovery was a wake-up call, and despite her actions, she insisted her feelings for me never waned and that she had no emotional attachment to her affair partner. Her assertions felt unbelievable. A 16-month affair surely generates significant emotional ties, I argued. She continued to deny this, pleading for forgiveness and asking me to focus on the positive aspects of our last 11 years together. She claimed to have always been a dedicated wife and mother, even during her affair. I found this hard to reconcile, comparing it to a thief justifying their actions by claiming lawfulness except for weekly bank robberies. Overwhelmed by her confession and request for forgiveness, I stated that her actions contradict any notion of her being a good wife or mother during that period. She sobbed, agreeing with my assessment and expressed a strong desire for psychiatric help and therapy. She asked for my support on her path to recovery and we agreed to discuss this further. When I pressed my wife about why she pursued an affair, her tears flowed as she begged me to stop the interrogation, admitting to deep, long-held mental anguish. She explained that during her years as a stay-at-home mom, she felt isolated and vulnerable, which made the attention from a successful, respected figure at her company feel intoxicating. She knew it was wrong, but felt overwhelmed by the situation. Hearing this hit me hard, but I acknowledged her candor. I then reminded her of the wider consequences of her actions, revealing how the affair contributed to the Joneses' divorce and estrangement from their children. She hadn't known this, having blocked out the affair post-confrontation. I asked if she was aware of her former lover's current poor health, which she wasn't, and upon mentioning it, she became defensive, 
insisting she had moved past those days and didn't want to revisit them. My mentioning that her ex-lover might appreciate her company in his declining years made her burst into tears and retreat to our bedroom, overwhelmed by emotion, despite feeling a pang of guilt for my harsh words. I recognized they paled in comparison to the deceit she had participated in. I allowed her time to express her emotions before firmly moving her belongings to the spare bedroom, a task that was emotionally taxing for both of us. The conversation with our children about the situation was as gentle as possible. Initially, my wife was too shaken to face them, but she eventually joined in, explaining the situation with remarkable composure. They were understandably upset and their view of her changed, though they remained affectionate and protective of me. Talking to our parents proved even more difficult. They were devastated, feeling a sense of guilt for unknowingly facilitating the affair by watching the kids. While our mothers were deeply upset, our fathers were particularly disgusted, refusing to speak to her despite the years that had passed. Our legal separation agreement is now in place, and we've decided to continue living under the same roof for practical reasons. My wife begged me not to finalize our separation, but I insisted it was necessary for clarity and healing. Home life has been calm. We communicate daily, and our interactions with our children are slowly normalizing. There is no intimacy between you as I have no desire for it while she yearns for affection, but I remain emotionally detached. As I continue with the 90-day evaluation period to decide between divorce, reconciliation, or an extension, I am deeply grateful for the support and perspectives shared here. Your feedback has been invaluable as I navigate this painful chapter. This might be my final update, but I may return to share the decision I ultimately make. Thank you all for your thoughtful responses and for helping me through this trying time.